Among players with at least 20 minutes played per game in 2022's playoffs, P.J. Tucker had the fourth best defensive rating among small forwards, only behind Jimmy Butler, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown. Tucker also had the highest three-point percentage at his position in the playoffs, facts which tell us that the 37-year-old is still an elite role player. James Harden claims that he lost 100 pounds in 2022's offseason, but number one option Joel Embiid and rising phenom Tyrese Maxey take a ton of pressure off the three-time scoring champion, even without PJ, as well as another wing acquisition in DeAnthony Melton. These Sixers at one point even their second round series against a Heat team that got one shot from the finals at two games apiece. But why couldn't Philly finish the job against Miami? Stay tuned for my take. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Now into the content. On Philadelphia's first day of training camp, Doc Rivers said that P.J. Tucker was the team's best defender, which, along with the stats I mentioned in the intro, proved to you that Tucker's far from washed up. Through the first three games of 2022's Eastern Conference Finals, up to that point, between the season and playoffs, Tucker had guarded Jason Tatum for 127 possessions and held him to just 15 points. Tatum went on to have more efficient outings in games 4 through 7. Out of 16 playoff teams, the 76ers had just the 9th best defensive rating and the 7th best offensive rating. And Tucker's vicious on-ball clamps and utterly consistent 3-point shot will make Philly a lot better on both ends of the court. Tucker decided to move on from Miami and sign a 3-year, $33 million deal for Philadelphia, which has received a decent amount of attention. However, another Sixer offseason acquisition you may not have heard about was Philadelphia trading for Memphis Grizzlies swingman DeAnthony Melton. Here's why picking up Melton was an insanely underrated pickup. DeAnthony took four spot-up three-pointers per game for the Grizzlies last season and made 40.6% of them. Expect DeAnthony to significantly improve the floor spacing around the Sixers' big three of Embiid, Harden, and Maxey. Maybe the biggest development of the Sixers offseason was a former MVP getting into prime condition. James Harden is not only one of the greatest, if not the greatest, scorer of this generation, he's one of the most lethal bucket getters in NBA history. 2018's conference finals against the Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant led Warriors saw Harden's Rockets take a 3 2 series lead and take a massive lead in Game 6. The Dubs pulled off an insane comeback. But if a few calls go Houston's way, we could very well be calling James Harden an NBA champion. Harden getting back to that same player is what Philly's desperately been waiting for since dealing for him at last season's trade deadline. Good news is, with Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey next to him, for Philly to go the distance in 2023, Harden really only needs to be 50-75% to of the player he was with the Rockets. On the topic of Tyrese Maxey, Newest Sixer in the aforementioned D'Anthony Melton has had some high praise for the kid. Melton had this to say about Maxi: He's a quick, decisive guard. He's able to get downhill, but he can pull up on you at any time, and he's very good at getting to the paint and finishing and stuff like that. It's his offensive game. It's evolving as he gets older, end quote. Melton and Maxi worked out together in the summer. They took part in a number of pickup runs in open gyms, and worked out in other closed sessions, Melton was blown away by Maxi's work ethic. I was similarly blown away when this man torched my team for six straight games in the first round. The composure, consistency, and off-court maturity from Tyrese is astounding for such a young player. The 76ers have the offensive ferocity to leave opponents scratching their heads as to what went wrong. They blitzed the Toronto Raptors in the second half of Game 6, winning quarters 3 and 4 by a combined 70-36, to 36, which was tough to watch from an opposing Raps fan's perspective. I still don't know what went wrong with Toronto in the second half of that game, but fact of the matter is, it wasn't that Toronto was doing too much wrong, it was that Philadelphia was displaying the best version of themselves. The nasty inside-out combination of Maxi and Harden's drive and kicks, plus Joel Embiid's post-scoring, makes defenses pick their poison. 2021-22 scoring champion Joel Embiid 
was just sworn in as an American citizen this past offseason, and Joel's less focused on winning MVP in 2023, as when speaking on potentially winning it on media day, Embiid said, I don't really care anymore, end quote. Last year saw Embiid average 30.6 points, 11.7 rebounds, 4.2 assists, and 1.1 steals per game, being top five among centers in each of those categories. That displays how Embiid's not just the most beastly post scorer in the game, but is also a very well-rounded big man like James Harden. Joel Embiid has received his fair share of criticism for his playoff shortcomings, and in games five and six against Miami, those shortcomings continued. In game five, Harden and Embiid combined for just 31 points, and they were also a combined minus 58. And in Miami's closeout game six, those two combined for the same amount of points while being a minus 26 this time. Those are unacceptable performances from Philly's two top guys, which there are no excuses for. Having said that, in the 2022 playoffs, Joel Embiid suffered an orbital fracture as well as a hand injury, which slowed down his ability to produce. He could have easily sat out, but Joel decided to wait until the offseason to undergo multiple procedures to repair a torn ligament in his right thumb and fix a separate setback he suffered on his left index finger. Embiid's going to have to play a lot more cautious this season as Joel has to realize his injury-prone nature and stay on the floor at all costs for when it matters most. We'll wrap it up with one of this team's top role players in Matisse Thybul. Despite having the third worst three-point percentage on open three-pointers, which gets him a ton of hate, defensively, Thibault's reach on the perimeter can't be forgotten about. The two-time all-defensive team player averaged a career-best 1.7 steals per night in 21-22, as Thibault provides elite awareness on this end. His mix of wingspan, long strides, and timing can't be measured on the stat sheet, though, as Matisse makes up for a lot of the Sixers' defensive lapses. You could argue it's Matisse, but in your opinion, out of anyone on the team, who's the 76ers' most overlooked player? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shoutout, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's Speaks winner is Boston Haltane, who says Luka's one of those guys who's going to fill the stat sheet each night. He can put the ball in the bucket, rebound, throw pinpoint dimes, and get some steals in the passing lane. That's why this year I see him averaging 32, 10, and 9 with 1.3 steals. This is definitely a stat line he can average, and his steals could be even higher, but I just see him putting in more effort on the offensive side to put the team on his back, no slight to Wood, Hardaway Jr., etc.